Welcome everyone to week two of the MEC Valorant season. I am Tucker, and this is my good friend Ash Khan. Welcome back! We missed you! It's been about six days since we've last seen you here for the MEC, but we are ready to continue. Ash, how are we feeling? I'm feeling great. Looks like we got uh, Clark University and Ohio Northern. And Ohio Northern we got to see a little bit of last week. Good to see him again, and I can't wait to watch how they've improved over the course of the past seven days, what they're going to bring to the table. And it's looking like, Tucker, with our map being split, we're going to have some excitement in the close quarters. Yes, yes we are. I love the close quarters play. It's going to come down to who can play the movement and the angles a little bit better. It's not going to be all hyper aim battle like a bigger map like Breeze or Haven would be. So I'm excited to see it. If you were not here a couple of weeks ago, if you, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, you would know that Ohio Northern actually won our Fall Clash land back in Des Moines. And so far, Ohio Northern has been making quick work of pretty much every opponent they play. Ever since the bracket stage on land, and even in just the round-robin format, week one, they absolutely went ham. And they're looking to keep that up. And here we see... The agent selection and Kyle is hovering a little something, something that's got me excited. And Tucker, it's the Yoru. And it's locked it. Okay. I was not actually expecting that to be locked in. But now with the commitment, especially recorded on broadcast, that, uh, there's no remakes for that. There is no changing that pick. So hopefully they have some strats in mind and I've seen teams play Choose around with Yoru, agent. you know, a lot of the time people's first thought is that he belongs on the larger maps, right? Breeze, Icebox, Fracture, but here on Split, I'm curious to see what they're going to pull out of their back pocket. Me as well. When you have these sort of uncommon picks, you're always tempted to see and excited to see what exactly they're going to try to pull off because... You don't pick an uncommon agent like Yoru, especially on a map like Split, if you're going to play with the meta and just play with the tried and true. You're going to try some stuff. And Clark University is going to have to deal with that no matter how easy or hard it is. Kyle, one of the best players in MEC at this current time. So I'm sure that they're going to be able to make at least a couple of problems happen on the other side. And Clark University is going to have to just find a way to figure that out and try to stop that yeah. from make or breaking the game for ONU. Which, ONU is one of these teams where if one player decides to pop off, that can make the entire <laughs> match a dub. Clark University, they're a much more team-operated game. If one player slacks, they all kind of just start to play at not their peak. A very, very momentum or tempo-based, right? Exactly. Picking off the energy of each other. I'm, ooh, I'm liking that camera that we're seeing out of Saf. It's kind of, kind of dirty. That is, that's something. Watching the Trailblazer as well as the Boombot roll on by. And they find one in this one way. This kind of makes their presence very well known, but regardless, still finding one is Saf. Flames as well. Coming in for the cross. Perishes, but it's okay. Saf finds two more, and Tucker, that's a quick and swift pistol round. Yeah, hard time pushing through A site split, especially with an insane one way compensated by the insane camera angle that it's you can hardly here. see, Ashcon. That was absolutely unreal. Saf, they studied before this. I'm going to have to actually um, bring out the rule book on that one and, and watch Saf set it up next time. Because depending on the geometry it sits on, it might not be tournament legal, but... Ah, why? Why get why get the rule book? I just get the notepad. Jump. I'm using that in my ranked games. No, hundred percent. Got to get that RR. That's for sure. I agree with you. But here we see the guy in light Ooh, flames again with that beautiful rocker, always positioned next to a teammate. Oh, poor Kyle, just eating these birds. 
Five versus four. The first engagement does not go the way of Clark. We've got Kang chilling out in a corner that is likely going to be eradicated real soon. And that it is. Secrets with the close range marshal. One of the weapons we don't see get too much action. But the second round is the time to use it, especially close range. I mean, it's got a scope out of her reason, but Secret says, no way, Jose. Three versus five, Clark University has to push through the entirety of the site in the entirety of heaven. Meanwhile, Saf is just chilling out in that corner with a very yeah. advantageous angle left. for him. But Saf decides not to get over aggressive, just takes the ping, clicks that button. Crossfire on the stairs, one no shot remaining. for them to Five get out of there. Leaves flames in the one versus three with just 15 seconds to go. And impotence runs out, catches them with the knife out. Flash and secrets gets another with a marshal. Yeah, the patience there is the kind of thing that you don't consider. Sass positioning kind of left alone. Kyle made their way over to the tree side, but. The thing is there, not a lot of potential. If anyone came out on a rafter to fight Saf, and that would have been a phantom dropped in the favor of the attacker. So tucking, waiting, biding your time, definitely the move there. You know, they do say patience is a virtue, and that saves the round in a sense. As we move on to number three. Bonus round, Ohio Northern. This is the round they're statistically likely to lose. They don't quite have as many good guns. Flames is, though, fine. Flames has a Vandal, 50 shield. They're doing great, but everybody else is looking a little bit weaker, like Impotence. Only has a Sheriff. A lot of sh uh, shields, but, I mean, it only takes a one-tap from a Vandal, no matter what gun you have. But I can say the same about the Sheriff. Mm, Secret's walking away in that boombot zone for a little bit. Guiding light out, and this is really scary. We're watching a habit build up with ONU right now, and it's the constant knife swap. I wonder if that's gonna bite anyone in posterior a little bit later on as we watch the dash in. Finally, the fight breaks out. Secret two lanes going one, two, three Bike kills total. Day. Two versus five on the bonus round, not where Clark University wants to be. Sky gets the information. Meanwhile, Saf is just. Quietly rotating through vents. Soup about left. to be boxed flawless. like a fish, and that is a flawless anti bonus <laughs> with Flames no doing the heavy see. lifting. The oh, Vandal man. going crazy. Three kills on the round. And that's, uh, that's a bit of a tough round when you look at it in the perspective of utility. Allowing yourself to fall oh, into the Defender's nice chokehold. Well, they don't really have a whole lot to work with. They got the Cypher one ways. They got omen smokes, and of course the trip wires are there to boot. Yeah. And maybe some passive or active info you can get out of the sky's guiding lights. Meanwhile, having a raise on your team as the attackers, as Clark University, Blinded. you really got to take your time in breaking these trips. There you go. Here. Now the defenders are getting aggressive. Here in a three versus two, Flames is more than confident. Down, They're please. on fire even, as we see Kyle wrapping around through the mid, and it's a pinch. By the defenders onto the attackers Blinded. over in shot. One fade Corona. Scratch that market Zona. Oh, Kyle tries the Yoru fake. I respect the attempt, but Zona is just too ready for it, but it does not last too long. Three players left alive for the defense. That will mark it four to zero in favor of Ohio Northern. Clark University now with another chance to buy up. Last time this happened, it did not go so well, and ONU was only on SMGs with one Vandal. This time they have a whole arsenal going up against the guns of Clark University. So a harder round, but let's see if Clark University can try to make a different outcome. Blinded. Yep, the information is gotten. Epitens knowing full well that it is a bit too risky to stay on that angle, so they're just going to jail for information, and the timing is not going to let them know what's going on, but hey, Satchel's will. Wow, dodge the flash, and fortunately, also move that crosshair away from any potential frags. Spike planted. Now Spike planted, taken away. We've made it to post. 
I think when you saves here, they have a lot of momentum and a lot more money than CU does. Yeah. I say just keep the money off of CU and keep the guns away from them as well. Try to maybe get an extra frag, but I do not see the need to try to commit too many players to this. And as One I say that, remains. Saf and Flames just entirely eliminate the entire team of Clark University and make me look like a fool. Kudos, Ohio Northern. Yeah, that is a nasty retake. Three versus five and still coming out on top. And it has to be... It has to come down to those crossfires and active holds, I want to say, Tucker. Like, when you are in that kind of situation with all your players alive in the post plant, you need someone to take that first contact, and you have to have that timing rehearsed on who can be swinging with you, and it just feels like Clark don't have the reps in on those angles quite yet. But they had the right idea, because I will appreciate their positioning. Oh, for sure. Clark University with a push was fantastic. But the retake just hit a little bit too hard. Yeah, I mean, it's hard when you get hit in the face by Mike Tyson. No matter who you are. Round 6, currently 5-0 in favor of Ohio Northern. And Saf misses the shot. Drona opens up all the space that can be opened on the A site. Secret's going to have to overcompensate. Kyle holding up there in the tower trying to planted. close that gap, successfully does, but there's still an advantage going for Clark. So I've got Paranoia and the Trailblazer means uh, a lot of space cleared. Holding out the Paranoia. No TP, do not want to risk the way to drag. Into the smoke though, perfectly fine with that. It's gonna be a better Tim's good for one, he didn't one out. Enemy remaining. Secret's right on back, responding, and Kyle through the elbow. He created a 2v1 between them and Secret's. Soup falls, and that's going to be 6-0. and oh. These retakes are nasty. doesn't matter how many ahead that Clark has. Idiots. It's just going to go right on back for Ohio Northern. And Ash, Kyle, let's talk about Secret. Do you see that number on the screen right now? 8-0. to zero. And we are six rounds in. That's the controller player, too. That's not the duelist popping off. That is nothing but raw omen energy. I'll tell you what, you're playing the spooky scary agent. Your I mean, hey, it's, it's the season. Exactly. It's just the season to be spooky. Yes, yes it is. You gotta love it. This goes here. Get out of my way! I'm gonna throw up my staff. You want to fight it! Cheesy. Cosmic Divide is in a... I've got your trail. Put off. Oh, Sav's in a really weird position. Seekers blind him. But somehow, Ohio Northern still has a one-man advantage. Sav is stuck right under Jet. Jet doesn't see him, takes a lot of damage. Somehow, still alive. But this retake is coming in hot. Welcome Flames to does my not world. see the sky. Out comes the Viper's Pit. They have utilized all five ults on this one round, and it is only a three versus four with the retake coming in. Impotence grabs one, two versus two. King has got to find a way to win this out. Playing in corner. Kyle now catches Fade. Kang with the shot, and Impotence stuck in a really hard position, and it only took five ults, Ashcon, the entire team, and Clark University has a point. Need a drop. Put it on the board. It's going to be a pretty large advantage. Thanks. We're looking at the economy. Seemingly all right for Clark. I mean, of course, you know, they just picked it up. So it's going to be ONU who struggle a little bit here, but mm, they're still going to scrape on by. Still going to have just just enough. Yes, this should do. Staff killing me with these one ways, man. Guiding like pop. Secret finds one, but not ready for a second to cross through, and this is actually going to work in favor of the attackers. Well, when the defenders lose their only controller, you're going to be able to play around a whole lot more, and if you spend the extra time to pull all the other utility out, then for Clark University, it's prime time. 
Clark going to take this one a little bit slower. We still have the Rays lurking over in the A site. Impotence is holding a really aggressive angle. I believe they got the audio cue. Out comes the flash. Blind gets the info as well. But the push on B has already started. That will likely call the rotate over from A to B with Rays flanking around. That's a nice little timing for Kyle. The thing is, though, you don't want to be going in too early. Oh, Clark with the double up. He's talking about how their crossfires are a little bit dicey, but this spike is not planted for him. Flash is going to break the crossfire. Fade is able to find two, but Flames to take him out. Here we are in the 2v2, and this plant spot is really going to make Clark regret their decisions. They buy a little extra time with the gravity well, but I don't know how effective it's going to be. Okay, they bought enough time with the, with the positioning. It, it really comes down to the spacing by both teams, Tucker. That spike plant, you know, if if they had taken their time, ONU could have gone much wider, closer to the wall, and been completely out of the line of sight. Just goes here. And it would have forced the park up there. and out of their spacing. That would have become a much more dangerous <laughs> round. But didn't seem like ONU opted to do that. <laughs> they uh, they diffused as close as possible to the line of sight. And so that became their downfall. Second round on the board for Clark. I was really worried after that first round that Clark University grabbed that yeah. they had to expend all five ults. That they were just kind of a one-trick pony. Like, if you... Sure, anyone can run around, but... You can't use all five ults consistently. A situation like that comes maybe once a game. But they got a second. My camera is destroyed. Seems like Clark University was finally able to destroy that camera. It's been causing them a lot of problems the entire game, but Come not this down. time. Impotence grabs the first kill. Nice shot. Cage to cage to the... Got save. Earl Theft gonna Heal. come out, compromise the position. We got three on the board A. now for Saf, leaving it all up to Fade. And that'll be a 4K flawless round. Here we're gonna see the money come back and build up better for the side of ONU and. Wow, this is a nice Clark University gonna have to kind of fight with a couple of soft buys. Staying on the board though. I mean, Split's one of those maps, Tucker, where you don't really have to worry about ex you know exactly what gun you have. This is the kind of map where you can pull out a Bucky or a Judge and still be perfectly fine on 80% of the angles. So, I, not that money doesn't matter, but. Certainly doesn't make too much difference from some of these types of rounds. What is going on with these swing through smokes? Secrets missing the shot. A rare whiff from the Omen player. But these things happen to the best of us. Three versus four. Omen, you now trailing on the scoreboard. Not on the scoreboard, but on the player board. Meanwhile, Clark University is going to take their time and go through mid and make their way up through heaven, try to get onto the B side, but now it looks like they're having second guess. Not sure why. B side is wide, wide open. Drona going to try to hold off from mid. Spike planted. Foolish. Up. It's gonna cost the life of Ayn and Zerona. Training it right on back, Kyle coming in. Now these retakes are looking a lot more difficult. That guiding light, that guiding light could have been really bad for Clark, but all good. They take those. I would like to see Clark University get one or two more on this round, but the way that Split has been playing, it's definitely a more defender-sided map, so if Clark can send us into the half with maybe a 4-8 score, or if this everything goes to play on a 7-5, to five, then I feel like they are in a pretty good spot. Of course, you would always want more, but 
yes. a team like this ONU playing right. on split, 7-5 or 8-4 is probably the best you're going to get. Oh, look at this. Fantastic off shot, but Shrona catches one. Definitely would have wanted to got a little bit more out of the op. Bash of draft is going to ruin the proper token sack, which is exactly what you want when you're entering into the site. Yeah. So we now have the 3v3, and as soon as I say it, I can find one enemy remaining. Mid. Kyle is coming out of the screen, pushing through. Soup found an elbow, but not put Come down. It's going to be one versus two. The Trailblazer comes out, no stun. This is going to leave when oh, you a little bit nervous to take this fight, but Kyle rounds the corner just in time. Here's a force reload. That's going to be cracked to the wall. Around closed. Eight to three. So we move on. So what is the point of the hat? That it is. Oh, when you playing that 2v1 perfectly, not forcing the one versus one. Because Soup, Last round they might the be half. one and ten, but that one and ten can turn to three and nine very easily if they were able to get those 1v1s. It just takes one round for a player to pop off. So big shout out to ONU's last two players keeping that a two versus one in the most unfair way possible. Like you said, Ashcon, nine. That goes the la round 12 now, possibility right of a on. nine three at the half, which is not where you want to be, no matter what the map is. I don't really, way. I don't really care what the map is, who you're playing. Nine three is not really where you want to be. And out comes the ult. Oh my god! One goodness. enemy remaining. Spike just keep spraying. B. Just keep spraying. Where's that fifth one? Oh, there's soup once again. One by one. Okay, we're running with our knife out. Is that what we're doing? Whoa! Yeah. I can't lie. I can't lie. Secrets might have deserved that one a little bit. Switching sides. <laughs> it was a nice clutch attempt from the Astra, but it was not good enough. I mean, a one versus five, there's so little that you can do. But now, a side switch. And Clark University has the chance to try to defend. Hopefully they can defend a little bit better than they can attack because they are just a couple of rounds away from dropping map one. Going down 1-0 is a fate that so many teams have seen in the past. Clark University wants to change that. Ohio Northern so far the top dog on the yard. Clark University wants to change that. Gotta be waiting out those flashes, gotta have the read. Cutting through. And there we go. Guiding light in this spot. Nice Verona. Already low on health. Just need a couple extra shots at the feet. We got to have it. Kang. Gotta know those lines of sight. As soup drops as well and secrets making a lot of space of all agents on the omen. Hey. Those TPs, uh, you can't underestimate them on split. You really can. It it seems like an, a map that there shouldn't be that many TPs for Omen, but there just are. The TP agents are kind of going insane right here. Yes. Would not surprise me if they studied up on this and decided to go with the double oh, TP the character nice with the Omen and the Yoru. Because so far... ONU is making Split look like a teleporter's playground. Cutting through that. Trailblazer going in. I think they spotted one. No, not at all. Flames. Gotta yeah. check that corner. Clear it. It's okay. Everything follows through. Here. Controlling the B side very well, but can they get the spike down? That is the question. CU is giving them kind of a rough time. Sap holding the corner, and we've got a Trailblazer whiff for a Trailblazer whiff. Speaking of whiff, here goes Sap right there. Space getting close. Out comes the paranoia. The Marshal can't get it done, and CU will anti the anti eco. Don't even start 
ten four. I'm no doctor. Bring it up. Slowly. Gonna climb their way back upwards. That even line. Closing the gap. Clark wants exactly that, but on you, they're not making it easy for him. This time around, having that much of an advantage in the economy, we have to see how they navigate the round. Having two duelists does job, mean Clark. you're expected to be a bit more aggressive and on split. That could do wonders for you. Except for the fact that the double Tank controller comp was made a counter exactly that. So if the utility Tank usage is effective out of Clark University, Tank then we might just see things tie right back up. Wow. This is a nasty timing. Kang might have an opportunity for another one. Flames, you gotta clear your angles. Clear your angles. Clear your angles. Oh, able to get one, but it doesn't clear the angle. And Saf is now kind of stranded right there in middle part. And Soup on the other side, catching off secrets. Oh, and you down by two players. And they don't have that much firepower either. Sheriff for impotence, I believe. Saf on the other side has either a Stinger or a Spectre. Actually, I don't even think they have that. It looks like they just have a Sheriff as well. Cage trigger. Two is four. Still, honestly, a salvageable round. I wouldn't say so for any other map, but there's something magical about split when it comes to these clutch situations. Especially when you got a judge left. in hand. It's a nasty weapon. But I'm very much liking the positioning out of out of CU. That as well. They gotta play this carefully though. Soup just playing down, playing passive. Honestly, if Ohio Northern wants to save it, oh left. no! Last player standing. The sound Five you get them, beat. you can't be getting away with that. You can't just drop down your vandal. You can save that for the next round. Moving nice, nice up. Here. Seven to six to five round differential. We're getting ever closer. That possibility of a tie, and again, I mean, you know me, Tucker, it's all about that mental. All about that mental warfare, especially in the second half. This is where comebacks are made. And that's heard ex it. it's exactly the position that uh, Clark are in. And you mean you never heard of a comeback coming out in the first half? Huck University has a pretty big opportunity, but this is a huge testament to their game. This is where Ohio Northern has all the economy they can get. And CU is making quick work with the push. Four versus two. And the spike is stranded now. Two versus four. Two-man disadvantage. Sav has to regroup, get back with the omen. Clark University just on autopilot. Here we see Saf walking it up. Trying to find one. Tucker, it feels like we're watching reruns. Because Saf is... Oh, how did you see that? Two versus four. Guiding light rounds the corner. Gets some information. Secrets has been spotted. Has to take this wide swing, right? Last has player to take the time up there. Tries to swing the staff. Works for one, but not quite two. Soup. Finishing off that round. You're going to scatter from my stuff. Now from seven to six to five to four. To take something away. A bit of a plus from that round. It seems like Ohio Northern has been consistently able to get one kill every time one of them peaks, no matter what it is, whether they get traded off or whether they don't. And that's been happening pretty much the entire round. When they peak, they are getting one, and that can absolutely be to their success if they're able to play this right. Of course, the side switch is up. It's still kind of awkward right now. It's, all the momentum is in favor of Clark University. you got to figure a way to change that up. It is making that space little by little. Here in one, Ayn over at stairs. That paint shell is really going to force everyone out, but doesn't matter. 
That hitbox is huge. And again, swinging out for Impotence, who tries to timing that nade, but isn't going to quite work out. And picking up two frags means they get another paint shells in their pocket. Throw that out, too. Combo with the molly. <laughs> They're just selling secrets. Listen, man, this space is... Uh, we're not letting you in. Uh, this is this is under our guard, and it doesn't help that the molly is hitting him for some HP through the wall. Gotta love the glitchy wall hitboxes. You just got to, Ashcon. It's fantastic. B site, target of attack for the Ohio Northern push. Secrets faked the TP. 30 seconds left. On the left. other side is Soup with the Phantom. Popping the head. Last player standing. Getting another one Five is aimed. Down. That makes four after we count Secrets. And now. Like you said, from 7 to 6 to 5 to 4, we are at 3, 10 to 7. Ever since Ohio Northern got to double digits, they have been floored. I need that. I'm trying to get a read on what's potentially to come because Kyle... They've been holding on to this Yorul for a hot minute, and unless I missed it, they haven't popped it yet this half. He's now in a lot of... Oil. Okay. Here. Well, hey, <laughs> here we go. The squeaky wheel gets the oil, and now we're seeing Kyle gather all the info. Zorona with the operator kicked off, Tailwind. Both popped on each side, Flames, finding that counterpart. Fine with the showstopper. Old kind of for all momentum. And Kang take Saf down, but the B-Site still under Ohio Northern control. They gotta get the spike down quick. They cannot wait it out. Secrets just waiting for the push to come through. You've got to get this plant down, start wasting time. Clark University knows they do not have to push until that spike goes down. And they have all the angles that they would Shadows need. Traveling. And I mean, if Ohio Northern is just not going to plant, then they're gonna have a really hard time no. with keeping this push away. They just have to wait. Another frag comes out. Kyle's got to play the heroics game. Successfully does for now. Makes it a two versus two. But they've got to find a way to hold it out. This fight could have gone down 10, 10, 20, 30 seconds earlier and forced Clark University on the hustle. But no, they wasted all that time. And what, what kind of has me curious too is from the shadows was available and there was the perfect positioning for O and U to cancel, right? You leave your omen on the site, throw them the bomb, let them teleport over to A. Uh, if they were counting utility, they would have known at least three players have rotated to B from the defense side. So they could have done that play with full confidence and all secrets would have had to do is buy enough time for their attacker friends to rotate around the long way, the safe way through spawn. Uh, now relegated to these weapons of sheriffs and stingers, it's looking less likely that, that they're going to stop this way. gap from being closed. It's going to be so, so hard. Ohio Northern has lost, I believe it's their last five rounds. Let's see if this Jet Ultimate Blade Storm can change that up. <laughs> Got him. First frag is found, but there's going to need to be a little bit more. There's been so many rounds this half where Clark University dropped the first frag and still managed to pick it up. That's sad, though. Chilling out in mid. Oh. Might just have a flank. Kyle coming back. Running it through, and Saf looking to sandwich from the backside, but they've got to push quick. They can't let it get way too out of hand. Saf trying to be quiet. It's such a hard situation. Oh, Saf! Oh, Saf! I oh know my exactly goodness, Saf barely catches that kill. The fuse coming out. There's no shot for them to Last stop it. Saf has to shoot through the smoke, but it's already happened. That will be another round. Maybe not. But maybe Kyle catches one last kill, but there's one more to go. And the spike was already half. Ten to nine. Pity. That was one of the most rounds of all time, Tucker. The rounds of all time. <laughs> that is the round of all time. Uh, I'm going to nitpick just a little bit. I don't usually like to, but... I think that there was a lot going into that round where it could have gone either way. 
Post plant positioning by ONU. You could have drawn a line from that default plant straight down, and you would not see any player on the side of ONU past it. Did not go take a corner in U box, did not find hell control. No one, no, no Omen TP over onto the rafter. And so it's really easy to just util dump when you're the defenders here, right? Clark, they got they got Nova Pulse, Gravity Well, Snake Bites, Paint Shells, uh, Satchels, Guiding Lights, Trailblazer, everything available to kind of flush out those holds. And sure, Saf came around, but we saw that the shots did not quite line up as smoothly as necessary. And so it became a really awkward fight. Things things just fell apart into chaos there in that post plant. And while I, I do respect the decision to use the Viper's Pit, that's also something that may have been uh, a bit of an overinvestment on the side of Clark as well. So both teams just kind of scraping together what they can to salvage that round. And it just so happened that, that it swayed in the favor of Clark University. I mean, yeah, when you uh, just... Throw all strategy out the window. What is going on? Clark, what are you doing? Why is everybody hanging? Why does everybody just try to rush that? Hello? They got the read. They got the read. <laughs> and they did all that not to even stop it because Shadows. now Owen Yu's going to change their mind. They're going mid. I like this. A lot more patience. Bidding out that Viper utility. The snake bites. Those are what's essential to the retake. Right, for, for Clark right now. Flushing out corner for three, basically. Or going to cut the top. Now we see that from the shadows used. A side's pretty clear as well. Seeker's just got to land a shot, TP away, very nice, he gets the frag, and gets the advantage for ONU. The slump is on the verge of breaking, but this retake about to come in with three ults as well. The Seekers, Cosmic Divide, Blade Storm, all available. Gotta play this right, Kyle has one, there goes the Seekers, but Kyle gonna pop the Intimutional Day Rift to keep them at bay, and that does the job perfectly. Oh, oh. You know, Secrets always does this play specifically against Soup. I don't know if it's a personal grudge or just bad luck, because Soup is able to punish them each and every time. I mean, yeah, I, I think so. I don't know if there's something that Secrets did to piss off the Valorant God, but, I mean, Secrets has tried those so many times. Here. And every single time they just run right into soup. I wanna I wanna take a difference between the contrast of like the start to the end of this game. Secrets started off with eight kills and zero deaths. Right now they are chilling at fourteen and there. twelve. Yeah, I must wait a moment. Guiding light and spotting the camera. That's really the important piece of information here because the Side of ONU, they haven't really varied the way their Cypher plays. Spike so, down B. Clark, they know full well that they can just leave one player to watch the Lurker and start stacking B. Exactly what happens. Secrets tries to step out onto the site, not quite working out in their favor. Empathy's going to be stuck as well, and that satchel is only going to Last player bury them B. deeper. Now Saf, you know, they tried lurking across the map, but didn't find any value. Too scared to take that 1v1. Earlier on at the A side, now having to cage triggered. crawl their way through mid and tossing out the cage gives away some information. Cage triggered. A couple of shots here and there, trying to cut the line aside. And I've seen this before. The high lows over in the back of B, those are nothing to scoff at. Crossfire as well. This, I know not to get too confident, but this is a GR. And there's simply left. no way that they can take off Ain unless Ain loses the angle. Spike is down, but this is very possible to take one fight at a time, and that they do. But Drona catches wind immediately. If Drona took a little bit longer, then that could have been a wildly different story. But 
They move at just the right time, and they steal that round yeah. away. Not even stolen. That was rightfully theirs from, like, the halfway point. It was a three versus one there at the end. Yes, this should do. I, I see this. a universe there where Saf tosses the camera to break the crosshair placement and finds two. Because it, it's a... It's a very disciplined thing to do. You have to get very comfortable with your teammates to just let yourself get spotted by the cypher cam, darted, and then leaving that tracker on you, right? Knowing full well that you have a have a two on one. And a lot of players they, they struggle with that. Sad. Just holding the angle that does not work at all. But could have been a five versus four, now changed to a four versus four. These four versus four scenarios have been working for Clark like it's bread and butter, peanut butter and jelly, milk and chocolate, whatever you want to call it. One minute left, and ONU completely caught off guard by Jrona, but Secret somehow still gets the better of it. A site has a big opportunity arising. They've got to get the spike down yeah. soon. They've got to steal this round away. They've got to reach match point first if they want to win this game out. Right in line. Let's flames know someone's coming in. But this control by secret. A main control is so integral to the post plan. Having it. Now just needs to be maintained. Flames. And Kyle, each getting rid of the walkouts one by one, though. That omen not needing to come into play, but still, great insurance on the round. Now to map point. Still possible for an overtime to come around. Clark, obviously not in the best position economically, but they do got Bladestorm to, to kind of give Zerona an opportunity and that showstopper. Now that's what's really big. This is the kind of round, though, where... where you take it too slow, you try to be too careful and try to save it, and it can backfire. I'd like to see an aggressive play with that showstopper, but it looks like we're watching a standard default. Maybe a little bit of an intention to walk up over an A main. Ken gets caught out, that's massive, but the stinger's still there, and Flames catches them anyway! Fantastic start to the round for ONU! Clark University has been severely weakened down. The Blade Storm is still alive. All three are still online, but the Neural Theft is going to make this round so much more harder. They've caught wind that both players are at B, but they're going to push there anyway. They're confident. They're pushing through. Sav catches one. Flames on the flank. Aim no shot, and we need a one versus five from Drona, and it's not going to happen. Flawless round to end the off. 13-10. Ohio Northern stay undefeated in the ONU streak. And the Midwest Esports Conference champs are still going strong. Fall Clash, Week 1 and Week 2 all have the same ring to it. And that's ONU being the top dog. Map 2 needs to be a little bit different. 100% ONU doing a great job. Clark, though, fighting back hard. We'll see if they can retaliate and send this to a third game or if we're going to close out this series in the next map. Stay tuned. And welcome back, everyone, to week two of the MEC Valorant season. I'm still Tucker. This is still AshCon. And if you're just tuning in, we had a banger of a matchup. Ohio Northern taking it 13-10 to 10 in the first map of Split. And now we're going into Haven, which has, in the past, specifically the LAN and week one, Haven has kind of been Ohio Northern's playground. Like, they have dominated time and time again on this three-sided map. It's honestly scary how good this team is. I mean, Haven is kind of the rinse, repeat, rehearse type of map. And it was a part of the original three, so a lot of teams have gone through the iterations, even if they weren't already playing as a stack. Each individual player should have enough experience on it to come together, bring their own ideas to the table, and if they've got an identity carved out for themselves, maximize that potential output. And that's kind of what we've seen at the ONU. They don't come in with traditional compositions. They play to their strengths, and they're pretty much willing to 
do the extra homework it seems on how to counter that meta that everyone is so hell bent on playing with. Oh, for sure, Ohio Northern. I mean, you saw what they uh, went out with on split. They won a double TP play with an Omen and a Yoru, and it went fantastically. There was a couple of rounds in the second half where they were like kind of slipping down a very slippery slope, having a pretty hard time staying afloat, but they were able to get themselves back on their feet before things got too bad, and they were still able to win. So, I mean, it could have been worse. They could have dropped the... 9-3 curse and loss. They almost did, but that's neither here nor there. Almost is not. It did. Almost is fine. 13-10 is okay. Yeah, they, they fought back hard. They showed that they're not going to shy away from a, from a map when things aren't going their way. They closed that gap. We were talking about it. We did that countdown 7-6 to six to 5-4. to four. I think it eventually got 3-2. to two. You know, those rounds were getting awfully close. But, you know, ONU, we're not going to let that slide. And now, moving on to Haven, we'll see if they can close it out in a more convincing fashion or if we'll see that same bite out of the side of Clark University. We're going to have to check out what Clark University has got in store for them this time around. They had a Really nice time in the second half, making Ohio University fight for everything. Ohio Northern University, that is. And they had a tough, tough time doing pretty much anything during that six-round slump. But let's talk about this agent select. This composition, Ashcon, the Neon Reyna, what is that? Neon Reyna is actually something that we saw uh, in that last week. Uh where they were were just taking ground left and right. I mean, it, it came down to, I believe it was Select at the time, staff agent. operating it, and they are operating it once again, uh, to, to go in, and, and they made this similar role swap. It comes down to a confidence of being able to crack wide open any site, and we watched ONU even take B, the most retakeable site for defenders, when they were on attack, and we might be able to see him do it again. So I'm not as surprised seeing it two weeks in a row, and after having watched it the first time, it's looking a little bit more adaptable. When you have a player like Secrets on the Omen, as well as the KJ alive, B site is not as hard as some people make it out to be. It's still the easiest site to retake by far. But it's not impossible. It's not like you're just going to crumble to every push you got. When you have those smokes, when you have a paranoia in hand, when you have two of the swarm grenades as well as like the, maybe the turret and the alarm bot, it is definitely a doable thing to do. Especially on a map like, or especially on a round like the pistol round. Would not surprise me if ONU decide to run it up through mid and just get themselves on the B because I mean it's the pistol. They've got a lot of utility and they don't have a lot of firepower, that being uh, CU. Standing ahead. We're watching this talk. Uh. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. That fantastic space being made by that Sova dart. Your did it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Even the observer. <laughs> Even the observer had something to say about it. Can we get, can we get WOBS in the chat, please? There. Oh my goodness. W open broadcasting software. Oh, here comes Sydney. Oh. Going for the fight. Whoa! Oh Fight my down God. mid. What is going on? Clark that University. Was ambitious to say the least. Despite everything, this is still a pretty even route. It's a three versus three. After Kyle makes a play out of thin air, Spike down. they've got an opportunity. Impotence and Sap teaming up, getting the frags, and the jet is pretty far away. They're going to get the spike down with no problems. And if Sap can circle around and catch this jet off guard, they have a real shot of winning this. They don't want to circle around that far. Impotence gets the first angle. This is that first bullet, but picks it up right in the second. Good for three. And getting that spike down means that they're on their way to that lockdown pretty soon and swift. But, Tucker, i got to be honest with you. i got to say, this 
first pistol round on Haven, this is the round of all time. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. That was the worst round of Valorant I've ever seen. I'm, I'm just gonna say it. That was... Oh my goodness. I mean, it was hilarious. I had a great time watching it, but... You know what? We're, we're, take, we're, ta we're taking it a little bit too much. That was fantastic. They know something that we don't. There's a reason we're in the desk. Nice shot from a fade. And I just want to point out this stack over on the seaside immediately. Converse is not leaving any gaps here. Immediately moving over to reinforce that seaside, but this is those two players back to back. We're, we've made it to the same spot that we've started from. Saf with the ghost. Pick it up to Vandal too. Bomb grenade out. This is going to be a bit dicey. East side though, they've got a pretty solid opportunity. If they're able to make a beeline past that alarm bot, then they have a real shot at it. Kyle. Oh, the bounce catches them. And they let Ain sneak away with it. The alarm bot catches the eye of soup. Swings around. Oh no, the vandal's out of bullets. And now Ain is on the flank. 30 They've seconds gotta left. find a way to get this down. Kyle runs out and Saf and company gonna rotate over to the A site. Ay ay ay. Here I'm watching that 2v2 and Saf knows just the way to my heart. I was thinking that we want the space here in CT. If you're a post planner, you need to be holding on to that. You don't want to go directly to the site. One enemy remaining. Isolating that breach is the perfect solution yet. to their problem. Zorona <laughs> is going to go ahead and get caught as well. That's a Wendy's 4 for 4 by Saf. We're going to take it to not, round 3. You see? Not a sponsor. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. And once again... One of the Valorant rounds of all time coming out from these two titans of the industry. And we got the bonus round up and coming. Clark University, five rifles. Let's uh, see what they can make it work. Let's see if they can make it work, excuse me. In Ohio Northern, the uh, composition for the guns and the loadouts is not looking really good. They've got a Guardian and a Vandal and a lot of nothing. There it is, Rona. Getting knocked out. Oh, wow, yeah. hello! Go, go, go! Good morning. Ashton, I don't want to keep saying it. <laughs> Secrets with a close range headshot. Ghost works perfectly. And the B site now is up for the retake. But you got Secrets on the flank. There we got Flames as well. Double kill. And it's up to Secrets on the other side. There we got Impotence from Long Range with the Guardian through the wall. Make that 3-0 to zero for the side of ONU. And Ashcon, what is going on? This does not feel real. Right here. If I had an explanation for you, Tucker, I'd right be here. more than willing to run you through my entire thought process. You know, that's kind of the staple of what I do. I really like to analyze, maybe overanalyze, but I'm not quite sure what's going on either. I'm just as lost as you are. We're, we're, we are definitely playing Valorant. Revealing area. And I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, oh, there we go. What a bolt. Fantastic bolt from the Sova. Oh my goodness, the jet is gone. And just like that, the first point of contact is completely eliminated. Now we are playing some really solid Valorant. Whoa. And as I say that, Soup gets away with a double kill with the Sheriff somehow. Ain is spotted with the TP and it forces them out. Retake's gotta be a little bit harder as it is a two versus three in favor of Ovenu. Scatter. Great repositioning, utilizing from the Shadows. 25 HP though. Very easy, easily backfire for secrets. Not spotted by Kang. Last player standing. But Fade is poised and ready. Oh. 
thrifty round from Clark University. Fantastic start to it for, by ONU. However, the retake was just a little bit too powerful. So much went wrong from the midway point onward for Ohio Northern. Great round from Clark University. I will say that they were able to take the smart fights. The double kill from Soup definitely helped out a little bit with that Sheriff. Gives him a little bit more money as well and puts him oh so close to the lockdown ulti. Damn, that's like my rank teammates. <laughs> just watching me take that first contact, huh? All right, Flames, I see you. you go though. I see the vision. I don't. I have negative seven in each eye. Oh, nobody clears out platform and Kang gets the casual double. Make that the casual triple as Ain is there. To finish the job out, Drona gets taken down from Kyle. The push is a completely eliminated. And the spike stranded in the C corner. Kyle, what do you do here? Do you save? Do you go for this? 50 seconds. They can definitely work with it, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. No reason to die. They got the ult, too. Thirty seconds left. Oh no! Oh no! Did we see the fight come out. No, no. Oh no! <laughs> That'll be two rounds in a row for Clark University. Seems Ohio Northern, honestly, maybe suffering from a bit of overheating. They get uh, quite a few rounds in a row, and then they stop. Ooh. Do I see a lineup a Bruin? This is a first. We did not see this in the last week. This is an so. Why is there an eye on the dog? That I lost it. <laughs> that is my. What is that? What is nasty. that? I kind of like that. That is insane. Ain gets spotted out, forced all the way back, and now they've got to somehow play this ring around the Rosa game without letting up a player. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Ohio Northern dropping a player. Dropping two. They've got a one-man disadvantage the on this round, and Clark University on the verge of tying this map up. Standoff coming out. Fade, all you gotta do is wallbang this. That is a wallbangable corner. Not sure they want to give up their position either. Oh. Kang swings out. One enemy advantage. remaining. Fade gets one as well. It's up to impotence yet again. The clutch situation. They're going to try to run it down over to the C side. If they can get this spike down, it might just be possible. Tries to catch them slacking. But they utilize the Hunter's Fury. And that will secure the round. Three to three. I'm out of here. Go, go, go. I got to copy some of these keybinds. You know, when are they going to add, like, text, text line copies from Valorant? Like a specific other third attack FPS. Anyways, let me move on. I, I would like Run that. <laughs> right? So convenient. That, okay, would, be, right that would be very fun. Replace first, though, you know what I'm saying? Standing ahead. Real. Real? I don't have one. But you got... <laughs> you don't have to say it every time. Come on, now. <laughs> Secret double kill. <laughs> I would have wished for Clark University to get a couple more, considering the jump they had. But you know what? Ohio Northern doing a great job of persevering out of there. Flames avoiding getting spotted. They don't know where this Neon is. And with that attacker lockdown, that might just be enough to secure the round. They've got a one-man advantage. They've got an old pop. They've got two now, if you count the attacker Killjoy as well. And Clark University has been pushed all the way back. So much time has been wasted, Ashcon. Shadows traveling. Oh, what a play!
Cost pause building up. I like the save here. I like the play to save. Oh, for sure. Clark aware, you know, they gotta keep the money in the back pocket. Run and low. Like slide. I will say though, these rounds are being fought back and forth. Right, on the first half of split, we were kinda seeing things just go in the way of, of, of O and U. And it took until the second half for Clark to respond. Now we're seeing a give and take situation here in the first round or first half of Haven. And this is this is already much more competitive and the energy by both of these teams, right? We we talked about how this rain and neon combination is made to break the timings of the traditional metas, and it's working, but Clark is adapting all the same. They're counter adapting, I guess is the way that we could put it best. Improvising. A way into victory has been the name of Clark University. And I do like the hyper aggressive composition from ONU. This time doesn't help out, but the gun warfare, not the gun warfare, the gun skill gets the job done for ONU. First frag is found. Ain somehow getting away with their life. Sliver of HP is left. And there's no heal on the defense to make that number go up. So Ohio Northern might just have a way to win this one out. Soup gets caught off. Secret of landing that really nice long range shot. And A site has a red carpet right to it. Uh oh. Oh no. This might be bad. Impotence. You gotta go. Yeah. Just, just, just go. They're not, they're not ready for it. Do it to them. Do it to them. Yeah. Impotence. There we go. What a play. Round number nine. Yo, oh. Oop. Into the black box. Into the sky. X ray vision. Superman. Oh, Down smash. Alright, let's see. As we fly around. Oh, is he gonna find the bear? Is he gonna find the bear? No! Observer missed attack the bear. F. F attack the bear. Respect. R.I.P. the boy. Here we see Fade. I'm trying to walk out. Set up for a default here. Changing that tempo a little bit. But kind of already pivoting to the A side. Look at this stack on the minimap towards C by Clark. If we commit over to A here, ONU is free. It's free real estate. Well, it is. Have the jet playing in the mid with the blade storm, but I mean that's not going to help. Once they get on site, the flank is going to be completely useless. They're going to have the setups all ready for them. Here, placing swarm plate. Being on the site. Oh no! Ooh. Unfortunate. They catch wind of the jet. Oh, rolling thunder. Rolling on the flank. Really put the pressure on secrets, knowing that. They gotta win this fight, otherwise it's the round wow. line, and that's gonna force an error. Pressure's too much. Four versus two situation. Kyle's doing Forward, work here. Impotence needs to have a response of their own, but their lineup doesn't work, so gotta make adjustments to the playstyle. I, I don't think you, I don't think you invest that Hunter's Fury there. There's no way you're gonna be able to keep him off that hard or that long, especially. With the lockdown coming out, and there's still that much time, but the spike, I think you just say GG, go next, save it for the next. That, uh, I see your point there, but also at the same time, you're, they were expecting to be able to play that double post plant, and Epitens, the lineup just wasn't there, you know? So yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, well, I was expecting my teammate to remember their lineup uh, to make this effective. And yeah, maybe after the first one, some comms need to go through to hard cancel. But we also saw Epitens linger in that in that line of spot as well. 
Give me that I think we're gonna stay for longer. Down, Speaking of staying for longer, no one in mid is staying alive for long. Three versus three, 20 seconds into the round. Iron Northern now stuck at not necessarily a stone wall, but more like a hurdle that they have to jump over. Cover going down. Gonna try their hand at the C site. So far, it's been kind of hit or miss for them. Out comes the Guardian shots. Not landing, but doing a little bit of suppression. One enemy remaining. And there we got Saf. Pretty much securing that round. I definitely don't want to count out the KJ clutch. But Ohio Northern is one of those teams that they do not budge easily. They have all the crossfires they can use. Not ready yet. Cover going out. Oop. I really want to clam chowder right now. There. Maybe a chicken noodle? Uh, Maybe a chicken noodle. Let me see. Oop, getting one. Yeah. Getting away with murder. Impotence. Can't land the shot. Soup, gonna try to suppress. Secrets flanks around. Make it six rounds for the Ohio Northern attack. Getting into the later rounds, one of these teams can absolutely pull through these last couple. Either make this a pretty one-sided match, or make this an even, even, or even Stevens game. Buck University can send us into the half with a 6-6 score line on the other side. Ohio Northern can dominate these last two and bring us to an 8-4 half, which is a perfect spot to be in with a comp like this. Ooh, get stunned. Actually, don't. Shadow stat. <laughs> director giving us a paint MS Uvu on the screen. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right? I mean, no! Got the something. shorty! A side almost opened up. We got AIM chilling out in the back side. But they are pretty low on HP. Able to get two for one before they finally go down, and now we have a two versus two retake coming up. Kang and Soup pushing up. Standing. You've got to fire through that. That is an easy collat all day. Uh oh. Kyle has a big opportunity. Oh, Catches one. Remaining. The stinger does not work, and Kang, last one left. Very low is both of them. They've got to play this really nice. Shock dart doesn't do any damage. Kang now smokes it off. Kyle, you need Not to play this quicker. You need to go. You gotta go. Spike's ticking. Kyle swings around. Catches the kill! Headshot for Kyle. Make it a four for four. Not sponsored yet again. Last round. Seven four as we go to round twelve. Four to seven. Looking like a much better half for Clark and we, we mentioned how, you know, off, off camera, we, we we felt that this was such a rehearsed map for ONU, and the, this same tempo is, is not really working for him. Not to say that it's not working, rather, the responses out of Clark have been pretty consistent, pretty strong. They've done a great job of cycling the Killjoy Lockdown and the Bruce Rolls, and I really want to give them kudos for that. A lot of teams struggle with keeping their ult on a decent cycle throughout the half, and... They're implementing it perfectly. Secret. Oh, that was that was risky. But it's not a whiff if you get the kill. Absolutely, it's not. Now we got the other side. Punish Fury coming out, and Flames almost dying to it. But thankfully for them, they don't. Seaside is way under control. They just got to get this plant down before it's too late. Kane getting shot through the box might just be a different story. They don't catch secrets. They get a double, and they have Last all but secured standing. this round. It's a one versus three yet again, and Fade might have a sheer bit of heroics in him, but maybe not. Ooh. Impotence catches him. No damage done, or Last very minimal. Standing. Fade, though, still staying alive. Oh, no utility here for Kyle. They have to jump jiggle. Works out. 
Sova v Sova kind of situation here. Oh my! <laughs> you can't do that with the Vandal. You can't. The accuracy just doesn't work Switching like that. Side. Wow. I can area pretty oh well my myself. goodness, what a way to end that round. And I and I thought for a sec that Fade might just have it in them, might just have that dog in them. And they did. But the dog in Kyle is just a little bit bigger, Fade. That's what you don't understand. And it'll be 8 to 4. And TD yet again bringing up a very true statement. Phantom over Vandal. Absolutely 100% every single day of the week. Let's see where we're going. I think we got a tech pause. Do we got a tech pause? Oh, we yes. do be tech. We do be tech pausing. We do be tech pausing, chat. Let's uh, let's uh, let's bring it back to us. Hello, I know you missed our beautiful faces. Um, let's talk about that half going down. At the start, it was a much more even affair than split. I mean, when Ohio Northern got off to that fantastic start on split, it was nine three. At the at the half, I believe at one point it was six to zero before they finally got around on the board. But this time it started off a lot more even. And, and but in the end, it started getting one sided again for O and U. In the end, it didn't even, even matter. <laughs> DMCA, DMCA. No, I mean it's like. Man, copyright laws suck. But like we sang it, you know, so it's like transformative or something. Well, I I, I, I can't call it singing, really. I don't. I, I just don't have that kind of voice. But you know, I like to flatter myself. <laughs> I, I I guess I understand. And I mean, let's talk about the future now. We we talked about the past. We've talked about the present. Let's talk about the future. The sides are switching. The composition is very, very aggressive if we're talking about the ONU side. And when we switch to defense, that worries me quite a bit. I'm worried about how that Neon and Reyna is going to affect the state of play. I mean, on attack, it works fantastically, but there's not a lot of movement to be had on defense. So I imagine what they're <sighs> going to try to do is replicate the raised fade setup over towards A, where it's going to be raise is neon instead of an early nade it's going to be the relay bolt uh, and then you're going to have reyna swinging aggressively the way a fade would swing aggressively if they were getting the reveal every time so that's what i'm imagining taking either a control or mid control early is kind of the only thing these two duelists can do of the other agents sova killjoy omen they can play solo more or less, right? Omen has the paranoia to blind anyone at choke points. Killjoy, of course, has her own setup. And Sova can gather the information at consistent intervals between Dart and Drone. So they're, they're pretty independent, and they're built into the right angles already just from this positioning. But you're 100% right. The, the concern is there, because at least with, with Fade Rays, you can still move around all your pieces, whereas... If you're if you're Clark, you're going to see this pattern of the of both duelists playing together. Yeah, it's a, I feel like there might need to be a healthy respect for the duelists here. And I mean, for the pistol round, we see it coming up. We got one duelist playing from long, one duelist playing from short. It's gonna make this a really tough way to push through, but. CU just completely negates all of it, wins the fights. I mean, it doesn't matter what agent you have if you can just shoot better. Five versus two early on, and CU is going to have an easy time getting that spike down. Right, this is going to be a tough round for O and U. Losing those early fights kind of snowballs the issue. When you're devil stacking your duelists, you're kind of hoping that they can lock down the area, and so you're leaning farther and farther away from them. The rotation timer's just taking a bit too long, and standing. now one by one, everyone's getting picked off. Secrets has to has to perish to the spike here, and they're gonna do exactly that, but being wary of the spacing so that they don't give away a free ult orb and 
I was talking about their ult cycle earlier for the side of CU, keeping those ults up. And looks like ONU has noticed the same, so they're not going to go ahead and give any free ultimate orbs anymore. They gave enough with the kills over there. 5-8. Clark University showing that attacking on Haven is just easier. Starting off with a flawless round, Ohio Northern had such a nice time with the first half that they wanted to do the exact same. Now we go to the anti-eco, and it does not look like Ohio Northern wants to expend too much money into it, and I cannot blame him for the fighter. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Double stun, and Drona with the judge. Flying jet with the auto shotty. Usually ends in bad news for the defense, especially on the anti-ego. Last player standing. Oh my goodness. You ever just swing into three? You ever just... This is crazy. Yeah, they, they know. They're aware. They're aware. Classic, you know, not realistic, but doable. Shorty, shorty, we maybe pick. not so much. We move in. Got it? All right, TD thinks they can do a 1v5 with the shorty. All right, let's put him in the cage. Let's get a cage match going. I, I agree. TD versus the entirety of CU Valorant. No, no, no. TD versus the entirety of the MEC Valorant League. Now we're talking. It's like the like the subs, the reserves, everybody. So that's like what? That's how many teams? That's a lot of teams. That's a lot of teams. Probably not. Anyway, back to the game. B site is the point of attack for Clark University. Meanwhile, it's Ohio Northern who's trying to spray through. Maybe catch one off guard. The shots. Rona only getting one. Would have definitely liked to see a couple more. This retake seems to be very possible, especially when you take into account which site they're on. B site, the easiest of the three to retake. But this spike is ticking. They're going to have to get at least one more kill. If the soup can keep shooting through, taking these stubs, then they might have a chance to win this out. There we got staff, impotence, kicking it out. Shots coming out. Aim! Live. There goes the stun. They're going to keep it on. Pros don't fake. And Ain wins it out. 10 HP is all it takes. And it's 8-7 with the bonus round going their way as well. I'm not going to turret placement. I always got to point it out now that I see it because there were... Gosh, it's escaping me, but there was a team that was playing Killjoy cool. on Haven and Placing they were not bomb. doing that for it. Placing swamp grenade. it. It's it's so free. There's so much value that comes out of it that there's no reason not to, right? So whenever I do see it, I just I just gotta point it out. You know, people are doing their homework. That's good. Stay in school, kids. Don't fail your classes. Stealing sight. Clark University and Flames Spike down A. has a nice shot. Thanks to the recon dart. One Flames remaining. and Secrets and everyone on ONU starting to get a piece. Silva goes down, but it might be a little bit too late here for Clark University. And yes, it is. Fantastic round. Thrifty to separate them a little bit more. Keeping four players alive as well. That will do nothing but good things for the economy of ONU. Meanwhile, Clark University... I can't say the same about. Right here. Uh-oh. They got a Swifty. That they did. Let's see, let's see what goes on here. As it, it should throw the economy out of whack. You know, speaking realistically. It's... Should be advantageous for ONU. I mean, winning is always advantageous, ahead. right? Let's be real here. Let's, let's not state the obvious, but... In that kind of fashion, 
throwing a wrench into the economy of the enemy team is going to have some great long-term effects, but you got to maintain the lead here, right? Still some rifles on the board for CU. And that means that despite having a Thrifty under their belt, ONU, Ohio Northern, can't get too overconfident. Can't let it happen. Red carpet to the seaside. And it seems Ohio Northern just going to try their hand at the retake. Rather than keeping them off the site, they're going to hold it up. They're going to retake it out. I mean, I completely understand the vision with a hyper-aggressive composition like they have. It makes all the sense in the world. Flames staying alive, keeping everything intact. Soup trying to play the heroics game. Fade, though! Perfect timing on the smoke. Dissipates at just the right time. And Fade and Soup, the bottom frags, are the last players alive. Shortening the gap once again to just one. Go, go, go. Oh, you just, uh, just having to keep pace, really. Go, go, go. They're ahead. It is looking dicey for them. Neither Definitely they should be watching their backs. Really focusing on the minor errors that they could be making. And, and working on shoring up those gaps. Get but out of my way! There's only so much you can do going up against there. Clark. They are bloodhounds. They see the, the, the round score go more than two and more than two apart and they want to bring it back to go 120%. And now, I ain't finding two in a row. Well, coming back. it looks like we might have things evened up on our hands, but... Let's see. We've seen a 2v5 before. A side needs to be retake. And Saf does have the Empress if they choose to use it, but on a 2 versus 5, Last it's standing. not quite desperate times just yet. Let's see if they can get an exit frag. Maybe two if they're lucky. Flawless. Looks like they're not going to. Soup headshots with a medium range phantom. And that'll make it 9-9, nine, nine. Ash Khan. Elvin use on a on a eco. This is kind of a dicey situation for them. What I haven't seen is mid control. I've yet to see ONU just do Hey, smoke mid, walk down. Simple but effective, right? That that turret over on the hay bales. I right haven't here. been watching, or haven't been noticing CU placing it down consistently. Could be a potential opportunity to go around. Is Spark opting to go for mid? Saf is able to find one. Soup though, trading it back. I will say, that gun you remaining in garage though, run. could be a threat long term. Lockdown coming out as well. And Flames with a judge catches them out, Spike almost down. gets the Vandal. That'll force an awkward situation. One player has been detained. Spike getting oh, down. They, they don't know that Secret is there. They catch one. And now out goes the Paranoia. But Fade peeks around. Doesn't even matter. Secret still catches the gun out. Still catches the frag. And now Soup has got to run over. And Secrets will land a third. Double digits yet again is first. I like that. Passing the spike to the teammate. Oh, no, no. Build up that lockdown. It's been a little bit of a struggle on these retakes. You know, they're recognizing that. And so they know which ults have to be prioritized. I mean, the fact that they should be prioritizing anyone who doesn't have ultimate up. Of course, going to be a fundamental skill here, but... See, two away from that lockdown, one away from the Hunter's Fury. I guess that is really the biggest struggle. You brought it up earlier, Tucker, about how this, this Rain of Neon isn't as effective on the defense. And sure, you can definitely play it for the initial hold if you want to fight for the space. But if you've got to retake it, yeah, the tools aren't entirely there. Awkward situation all around from... Ohio Northern, they just have to make do with what they got, and this is one of the better teams at doing that. And that could be part of the situation and part of the reason why they did it, but still, it's awkward. 
Kyle holding it out. Double kill catches a lot of it. Soba taking up the entire one kill feed. Remaining. Two versus one as the spike Five is down. down and the other KJ is all the way over in the garage. Has to run it back and try to get this spike. But impotence and flames holding the long range angles. And once the call out comes out, they're going to have a really tough time with us. Soup, you need a good play. Alarm bot out. Alarm bot coming out. Keeping the log safe space. Counter the turret. This feels like a, it feels like a game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I summon my alarm bot and end my turn. Well, I'll be placing down my turret in defense mode. I don't know. That, that's what I'm imagining in my head. It's been a long time since I've watched Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, I could absolutely days. see that, but I mean, impotence just counters that because he has a gun. <laughs> Season zero of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, oh. indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> TD, TD going. Well, I guess you've never seen the original season of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that's, that is true. That went hard. Like that. <laughs> I did, I did uh, go hard. This is before they even wow. had the cards. <laughs> Kyle putting their team up early on in the round. Let's let's snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. One round away is all that ONU is from match point, and it's a really awkward spot. Clark University has got to push through everything. And there we see the turret. Ash, that's your favorite turret so far in this game. That's what yeah. I've seen. And they catch the info that they need. And Clark University's got to fall back. Oh, the gun barrel! That is unbelievable! Five versus three! Staff walking it up. I'm liking this. Knowing that they need Spike some window planted. control. Alright, they got a numbers advantage. They should leverage it. Probably. Something we think of, right? Art of War, maybe. Leverage your advantage. I don't know. And we see Rona and Kang, though. Also playing numbers. Sticking tight. Not trying to lock. By one. Staff around the corner. Clearing all of that space. And it just becomes a matter of, of you know, deduction. Well, they're not a mid. Well, they're not in C League. And hey, I saw, I saw him in A. So it's just a matter of turning your crosshair to the right place and waiting. Pounce. That's what we see. Making it to Matt Point and look, Tucker. If this gets taken home by Ohio Northern, series is theirs. Yes, it is. They won the first map as well. 13 to 10 on split. They got a chance to take a 13-9 here on Haven. And let's look at the ults. Three versus two. Ohio Northern has the most controlling alt in the game ready, as well as the most versatile alt in the game, as well as the most yeah. aggressive alt in the game, all online. And I believe the other two ults are pretty close as well. I mean, Saf's Empress is only three orbs away. And I believe the Hunter Fury is like two. I'm not 100% sure. Nowhere Might not even need it. Out comes the attacker's Hunter Fury. Saf missing some shots, but Kyle's able to find that flank, though. Keep it an even four versus four. And look at this flank. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Secret catches one and two. Four versus two. One enemy remaining. Make it one more. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. All right. All right. Put him, in, put him in the trap. Put him in the corner and then stun him. That's brutal. Fantastic series, ONU, Ohio Northern University staying the top dogs of the MEC for now. So far, they are 2-0. and oh. I believe they've not dropped a single map in the round robin format. That brings them to a total of 4-0 and oh, if you want to count the maps as well. But man, this Ohio Northern team is a scary sight to see, and they just continuously show why. Clark University, in round robin, of the LAN, they were the number one team, only dropping one map with a differential of plus 52. 
and Ohio Northern beat them 2-0 and made it look somewhat easy. Definitely kudos, kudos, wow, we kudos to Clark University for making it a hard fight, though, bringing things back and showing us what they've got. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they contend with the rest of the squads in the upcoming weeks. But once again, Ohio Northern taking it home, exactly as you stated, Tucker. So, folks, stay tuned, though. We got a next set of series coming right up.